Hello everyone, Patrick here, and today we're going to be learning the FMC in the PMDG 737. We understand a lot of you might be new to this aircraft, so we just want to show you what we know to get you up and flying. Now, the first thing I want to mention under PMDG setup is this is where you can set the aircraft to always come on cold and dark. I like the cold and dark with the GPU already connected, so I have that one defaulted to the sim for when I load in, so that is where you can select that. Now, uh, another thing I want to mention is up in the aircraft setup, there's some things that are turned off that you might want turned on, and the only reason I know about this is because from previous experience with the PMDG. Now, the V1 callout, uh, approaching minimums, I believe those are defaulted off. I already have mine all turned on, plus um, all these callouts. Even some of the ones from the final 50 to 10 are turned off. So this is where you can turn all those on and plus plenty of other options like changing out the Honeywell and the Collins. But have a look through those just in case there's anything uh, else you want, but those are the main ones that, that I like to fix for myself. We're going to clear that message there. We're going to deal with that later. Now, this is where you can load the fuel in the aircraft, so let's come up to fuel. And we're going to be carrying 16,012 pounds. Of fuel today so we'll plug that number in there you can add any number you want uh, you can also set the tanks full two-thirds one-thirds and then this is where you have all your weight information up here based on that data and we'll come over to payload this is where you can add how many passengers you have on board and cargo you can change it for instance to 137 we're gonna leave it at 148 the full aircraft today you can also set it to max empty or random in the bottom right there So where you can manage the doors, push back, ground services, anything you would like to drive up to the aircraft can be requested here. But not getting into too much of this stuff, just those are the main ones I wanted to cover. The fuel and the payload are pretty important. Um, so to get started here, we're going to click on FMC. And this first page just shows you what uh, nav cycle we're on, the type of plane, engines. We're in Denver, so we're going to type in KDEN and put it in the reference airport there. Now, gate, uh, this never worked for me. Uh, maybe 10% of the time it will work. Uh, C35 is the gate we're at at Denver, but it just never seems to pick up the gate. But that's okay. It doesn't. You don't really need that in there. Um, to align, We already have the IRS system aligned. We're going to grab the one from the left or the right and just plug it in the set IRS position. And then you're good to go. That just lets the aircraft know exactly where you're at so it's aligned. So next, let's go ahead and click on Route. Again, we're going to type in KDEN. And we're going to KBER, so we'll go ahead and type that in. Our flight number today, we are Southwest. Flight number 799. So we'll put SWA799. Now, if you want to add an, a route from Simbrief, you can do that here. I'm going to show you exactly where you put the route. And this makes it very easy for very long routes with lots of waypoints that it just puts them in. So we're on Simbrief right here. And this is where you have your fuel information, weight information for the flight that it gives you. And you also have it on uh, the paperwork here. This is where a lot of it is listed as well you need that information to plug in for your flight. But what I really want to show you is download FMS. If you come over there, we'll close this window out, and you come down to PMDG Flight Plan. And download that. Now the easiest way to get to the folder is if you have your community folder, click on that and go to that Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, path in the folder with the crazy uh, code at the end. Go to local state, packages, and find the PMDG aircraft at 737. Click on work, and click on flight plans and you're going to dump it right in there. Once it's in there, the FMC will recognize that when you type it in. So you can either select it here, 
Or you can type in the file name, which was kdenkbur. And you just put that in there. I'm not going to actually do it because I want to show you how to enter that stuff manually, but for really long routes, like I said, that can really come in handy to add that. But we're just going to clear all that up. You can enter the runway now if you want. We're going to be doing 3-5 left, but uh, if not, that's fine because we do it anyway in the departure page, which we're clicking now. So you just click that dep. And we're going to be doing the Rocky 5 departure to DBL. So we just need to find Rocky 5. There it is. We select that. Transition is DBL. And the runway, which should already be selected because we typed it in, and it is 3-5 left. We're going to select it again and click Route, and then Activate, and then Execute. But we're not done. We have a few more to add. We have an airway. Now, if you ever see a, uh, a letter with a number, that's typically going to be your airway. Waypoints don't usually have numbers in them. So we're going from Juliet 60 to BCE. We'll plug that in. And we have one more, it's Juliet 100 to DAG. Now these are basically like highways in the sky. These are the labels for different ones. So always your airways are on the left and then your waypoints will be on the right. Then we can execute that. And the last thing is just we need to get our star in place. So we're gonna come back to the departure approach page and for K Burr, we're gonna click the approach button. And we're going to look for the Linux 8 departure. And we'll be transitioning in from DAG, which we already entered, but we'll click it again. Typically, your runway you'll add once you get there, but we're just going to head, go ahead and click that now. It'll be the ILS for runway 8, and we can execute that. You also have some transition options. Uh, not sure what those would be just yet. Those are sometimes things if you're on ATC, you find out once you get there which is why you leave them blank. But if you're not doing ATC, you could add that stuff to be fine. And the legs page is where the route will be. Now, if you have any discontinuities like this one, this is one actually we don't want to clear, but I'm going to show you how to clear it anyway. You just click the waypoint below and pop it in there. Now, the reason you don't want to clear that one is because actually I think we should have a transition before that. So it might, you know, it, it, it's not the a clear way to the runway uh, doing it that way but just to show you that's how it's done now we're going to come over to the perf page now if you just click on the zero fuel weight key that will give you the number and it'll also fill out the gross weight now our reserves today are 3.3 .3 you can leave the plan part blank. We don't need to add anything there. Our cost index is going to be 54. And then our cruising altitude today will be 360. And we'll execute that. If you have the cruise winds, you can add that. If you leave it blank, it will still be fine. We're going to put in a 218, and the winds will be 63. It's just letting the aircraft know what the, the average winds will be and from what direction during your trip. Transition altitude here can be changed to uh, 5,000 in some countries. You just plug it in there, but we're in the U.S., so we're going 18,000 with that. Next, we can come over to N1. And this is where you can have different D rates for the engine on takeoff. And then up at the top, you have the SEL. Now that is kind of like the flex temp in the Airbus. And if you don't have the exact number for this, I would leave this blank. I never really put the number in for that. I never have it. There's certain ways to calculate it, but leaving that blank, the plane will do just fine without it. Next, we're going to come over to the takeoff page. We're going to put flaps five for our takeoff today. You can also do flaps 10, that's used sometimes. But we're doing flaps five. Now if you click on the blank CG there, 
click it twice, get that 18 in there, whatever number yours is, and it'll give you the trim, and that's what you're going to set your trim wheel to for takeoff. And then for your V speeds, you just click these, and it will populate with the number on the left. And you have those. Of course, V2 will go up on your MCP for the takeoff. And then the next page has some information where you can add the, the wind and the direction on the runway, the slope of the runway, the condition of the runway, whether it's dry or wet. So we do know the wind information for the runway right now. So we'll add a 210 slash 11. And that is just saying the wind is coming out of 11 knots out of 210. And of course, we got to redo those. Nothing changed, though, that I can tell. Maybe the first one did. But it's all set up now. That is really all there is to setting up the FMC and the 737. See, it's not that bad. Once you get used to it, it's it's pretty good. You can come over to cruise. It's, this is just information we already have set up. Our target speed, 0.79. That is pretty typical for a flight. Uh, but there is one more thing I want to show you, and that is on the fix page. Now, this will add radiuses around. You can do it around waypoints, but it's typically done around airports. So this will tell you the full distance around the airport. Now this is good because it'll show you where the approach boundary is, where the tower boundary is, things like that. So if we type in KDEN, then you do slash 5, that's for 5 miles, slash 10, 10 miles, and slash 25, 25 miles. If you do this, you'll really look like you know what you're doing. Now if you see that on our map display, those circles are there now. Plus too, you know, when you hit that 10 mile ring, that's when your landing gear should come down. Now one more cool thing I want to show you is um, you can view your plan, a preview of it. If you come over to the legs page and then you move the CTR button to plan, you now have this step button on the bottom right of the FMC and this lets you step through the plan. There's a lot of waypoints that are duplicates throughout the world, so it's possible you put the wrong one and you might start going a thousand miles off course somewhere else. So this lets you preview the plan, make sure you're going exactly where you need to be going, and just, you know, so you have a safe and fun route and you don't waste your time. But that is uh, one trick you can do to see all that in advance. But yeah, that is the process of setting up the FMC. If you have any questions, please pop them down below. I'll be happy to answer it if I know it. I also uh, can answer other questions about the 737 if you might have them. Just uh, shoot them away if you need to. But I really hope this helped you guys. I, I, I try to explain it in the best way possible. And, and usually a lot of people get it. They like the way I explain things. So I hope this helped you. You guys have happy flights. I'll see you next time.